Hello, everyone, and welcome to this webinar on the impact of online shopping on the UK high street. I'm Margarita Saraulo. I'm an outreach officer working for the UK Data Service um, based in Manchester at JISC. And I'm presenting uh, today with Les Dolega. He's a lecturer in geographical data science for the Consumer Data Research Centre at the University of Liverpool. This is just a quick overview today. Um, I, will in, I will introduce the phase two of the Big Data Network and the Consumer Data Research Centre in particular. And then Les will tell you more about his research on your resilience, including the data and methodology he used. And then we will finish off with some questions. Right, so the ESSE has created a big data network, which is divided in three phases. As part of the phase two, it is investing in the establishment of data research centers with a focus on business and local government data. These three centers are the BLG Data Research, as you can see, so the ESSC Business and Local Government Data Research Center, based at the University of Essex, the Consumer Data Research Center, which I'm going to tell you more about later, and the Urban Big Data Center, based at the University of Glasgow. So these three research centers make data routinely collected by business and local government organizations accessible for research, and they benefit to data owners and society, and they always ensure that individuals' identities are safeguarded. So um, the UK Data Service has a big data team called Big Data Network Support. So the ESSC has um, invested in us to enable research to make the most out of these data for knowledge, knowledge exchange and impact. And uh, we support and coordinate the activities between the three data research centers. Our aims are to unify data discovery across the uh, phase two of the big data network uh, collections. We encourage the sharing of information and expertise across these centers and coordinate user training and capacity building in big data analytics for researchers using the data. Uh, just a few words about the uh, CDSC in particular, because uh, Les does um, work for the CDSC. Um, they combine expertise uh, from four different universities or researchers within those universities at the University of Leeds, um, the University College London, University of Liverpool and the University of Oxford. They do provide uh, data uh, that, co that, yeah, that cover a range of topics concerning uh, the characteristics, constraints and outcomes of consumption. You can find a searchable data catalogue on their website and they do offer open, safeguarded and secure data, so with different access conditions depending on the sensitivity of the information contained in the data set. Um, they do offer some training as well in data analytics, um, mainly on how to use R and GIS. Um, and I strongly suggest you check their website out where there's more information about it and it's cdrc.ac.uk. And now I'm going to hand over to Les, who's going to talk to you more about his research. Uh, hello, my name is Les Doliga, and I'm going to talk today about um, e resilience of UK retail centers. This is a project I've been working on about for about the last uh, 18 months or so. So I will start with a bit of a background on the retail sector in the UK and the evolution of retail town centers in the UK. Then I will introduce the e-resilience concept and move on to the empirical analysis of um, and research outputs. Lastly, I will outline the value added by this study. So let's start with a um, bit of information about retail sector in the UK. Many commentators claim that Britain is a nation of shopkeepers, okay, or that shopping is a national pastime. So there must be something to it, um, as the UK retail sector has been very successful over the past 25 to 30 years, and it's an important part of UK's economy. There are almost 3 million people working in retailing at the moment, which is about 10% of the UK workforce. Retail sales stood at £7.1 billion pounds per week last year in 2015, 
and this is an equivalent of 21% of UK's GDP. And as you can see, it's a massive chunk of that GDP. On average, we make about 200 shopping trips per year, which comes to about just under four trips, shopping trips per week. There are various shopping destinations, but in this study, I will look mainly at the town centers and shopping centers. So let's start with the evolution of, of town centers. Town centers, they constantly evolve, and this is viewed as a, as a good thing. Sometimes that allows them to adapt to things like shifting consumer demand or external internal shocks. In the UK, that evolution has been driven by four major forces. The first of which is competition from out of center large <coughs> retail development. Excuse me. This type of developments have largely resulted from the policies of Thatcher's government and a loose approach to planning system. The so-called vitality and viability of UK town, center, town centers was only prioritized in the mid-1990s by adoption of the so-called sequential test, which prioritized retail developments within town centers, followed by edge of center, district centers, and only as a last resort, out of town sites. Then we've got the second force, which is a shock of the economic crisis and the following era of austerity. In broad terms, the impact was complex, but it was largely associated with sharp increases in vacancy rates. The average vacancy rate in England and, and uh, well, in the UK had increased from about 8% in the pre-crisis period, sort of 2007-8, to 14.5% in 2012. And since then it was gradually declining and it stands at the moment at about 12%. Uh, then we've got the changing demographics and consumer culture. These include some trends that have been going on for some time, such as aging society or decreasing household size. However, really interesting here are the recent trends, such as increased demands for value for money or progressive rise of convenience culture. That's why we can see in, in our high streets an increasing number of poundlands, uh, savers, home bargains, or convenience stores such as Tesco Express or Sainsbury's Local. And then we've got the fourth force, rapid growth of online sales. Online sales have essentially tripled over the past seven, eight years, and now they exceed 15% of total UK retail sales. And I have to say this is the highest figure in the entire world. This can be nicely symbolized by Amazon having become the country's eighth largest retailer. Um, the major retailers, they have adapted to that change relatively quickly. The traditional store-based retailers, uh, we call them sometimes bricks and clicks, sorry, bricks and, bricks and mortar, bricks, bricks and mortar, transferred part of their business online, which was relatively easy. And this new business model is also is, is referred to as bricks and clicks. Um, however, it is worth mentioning that this transformation wasn't as successful for many smaller and independent retailers. And what is really interesting here, shown on, on this bottom graph, uh, there we go here, is that uh, the online penetration rates, they vary considerably by retail or service sector. The sales of products that can be easily digitized, such as music, films, games, or software, take place mainly online nowadays. And at the other end of the spectrum, the, these types of retail services that provide, provide some sort of experience, such as health and beauty or leisure services, there are also products that, will, that we like to expect in person, physically, you know, such as groceries. So, what is the research question? Well, I was interested in the response of UK town centers to the increasing online sales. Um, so far, 
most researchers have focused on supply factors. And as a result, the geography of online sales was little understood. So I've addressed that issue and answered some of other questions as well, uh, related to both supply and demand factors. And in particular, there were these two questions got here. How the structure of traditional high streets is being impacted by consumers' propensity for online shopping? And a second question, how irresilience of retail centers can be measured in a meaningful, useful, or helpful way? The novel thing about this research was uh, that we employed big data from various sources in order to examine the propensity for online shopping at local level area. We estimated the exposure of retail centers to online shopping and we estimated um, retail catchments at a national extent. So um, let's have a quick look at the concept of irresilience. Retail irresilience is a, is a novel concept, a concept that defines the vulnerability of British retail centers to the effects of rapidly growing internet sales. In other words, it's a concept that defines and measures the impact of online sales on more traditional uh, retailers and uh, traditional high streets in, in the UK. So as this is a novel concept, the study required um, a theoretical framework, but also a robust method of how irresilience can be measured. So the empirical study consisted of the following parts, which are listed here. It was the estimation of catchment areas for UK retail centers, it was the obtaining of internet user classification at the small area level, that was the LSOA, lower super, super output area level. There was the assessment of the exposure of retail centers to online shopping and estimation of retail supply vulnerability. And I, I will talk about those in, in, in a minute, in more detail. So let's start with uh, <clears throat> the theoretical framework. So the irresilience is about both um, supply and demand factors. On the supply side, we have connectivity, which essentially is um, available infrastructure to get online, and we proxy, proxy this by speed and rurality. And on the demand side, we have consumer behavior, and essentially the decision of whether or not to shop online, okay? That's very crucial, whether or not to shop online. And this decision depends on customers' engagement with information and communication technologies, so-called ICT, but also on uh, the catch dem demographics, on catchment demographics. In particular, factors like age and socioeconomic status turn out to be very important. That decision of whether or not to shop online is also closely related to retail supply factors. Yeah this box here. And uh, we looked at things like retail center attractiveness, safety, uh, accessibility, shopping convenience. So the assumption was if, if the retail center offers a safe, convenient shopping environment, one which is really attractive, the center will be more e-resilient. So let's have a look at uh, our data, first is applied and demand data. So overall, there are about 1,300 town centers in the UK and twice as many shopping centers and retail parks. Um, the map on the right shows spatial distribution of these town centers, 13,000 town centers depicted by their size. And as you can see, the size of London, it's much bigger than any other center, not even and other center is close to that, so that size is completely. In terms of retail occupancy data, we got it from local data company. Another supplier of such data is uh, Goat Experian. This data provides detailed information on the location of all retail and service units and uh, the different classifications. There is a broad classification which includes uh, 
these four categories, comparison, convenience, services, and vacant. Comparison essentially, comparison retailing essentially is the non-food retailing, convenience retailing is the food-related retailing. We've got services and vacant, which are our empty units. And there is also a much more detailed classification with more than 100 categories. And in here, you will have uh, categories like uh, convenience stores, supermarkets, shoemakers, post offices, uh, estate agents, and so on and so on. We also used um, 4.7 million unit postcode level internet speed test results, which are available from broadbandspeedchecker.co.uk. And uh, we also used distances from the nearest mobile masts, the so-called uh, base stations. In terms of um, demand data, I have to say that the data will, were assembled at the 2011 lower layer super output areas, so-called LSOAS, LSOA level, okay, which comprises over 34,000 zones in England and Wales of between 1,000 and 3,000 people. So each LSOA had about 1 to 3,000 people in it. So firstly, a range of socio-demographic indicators from the 2011 census was collated, including levels of education, employment sector, prevalence of full-time students, age structure, and population density. And secondly, the Oxford Internet Institute survey, the so-called OXIS, were employed. Uh, that was a sample for the whole Great Britain with a sampling method that enabled the projection of estimates to the whole country and comparison over time at the uh, LSOA level. Again. So, one of the first steps was uh, after the conceptual framework, um, it was estimation of retail catchment areas. So the aim was to estimate catchment areas for a national network of retail centers. This is a complex task and uh, one that requires um, a large degree of generalization and a substantial computational power to say the least. Okay? So um, traditionally there are two types of methods used to estimate retail catchments. That is, there are the simple methods such as buffers or drive distances or drive times. Uh, they are still popular and used by many retailers. Uh, however, they are unlikely to sufficiently capture the complexity of different attributes that may influence true catchment extent. So our preferred approach was to use spatial interaction models, the so-called gravity or probabilistic models. This type of models, they apply Newtonian laws of physics to the modeling of shoppers' behavior based on the influence and the attractiveness of the store or retail center or network of retail centers. And that influence declines with distance between origin and shopping destination. Um, these types of models, they, they provide much more accurate uh, catchment areas. However, one of the major limitations is that um, there is a need for some sort of customer insight data in order to calibrate the model. Otherwise, we end up using only arbitrary values, which is not uh, might end up with you know irrelevant uh, output. So here is the half probability model. We use a bespoke version of it, and in here you've got. Um, uh, got the formula of that model and, and got a graphical representation just to help you to understand uh, how, how that, that model works. Um, so the simple version of Hoof, <clears throat> uh, I calculated the so I calculated the probability p for each customer's location i. In our case, these were SOS. Uh, of using a particular center J. Okay, so we calculate the probability P for customers' locations I of using retail center J. And this turned out to be a function between retail center attractiveness A 
and a distance d between the actual retail centers and consumer uh, domicile. Uh, of course, you can uh, disaggregate that model in, in, in model parameters into things like large, small, medium town centers. We used in about five or six. Uh, parameters in, in that case. Uh, this is just a, a simple version of it. So then we have um, some outputs and model calibration um, as well uh, depicted here on, on these two figures. So um, we can see here Manchester on the top and, and Birmingham on the bottom. So uh, the, the output looks quite reasonable, I have to say. It looks quite good, in fact. In red, we have the primary catchments. In orange, we have the secondary. And in yellow, the tertiary catchment. So for the catchment for Liverpool, sorry, for Liverpool, for Manchester city center, it's, 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 it's really large. And uh, the catchments for the surrounding satellite towns are much, much smaller. But in terms of uh, model calibration, I used Axiom's data on shopping flows. These are origin destination matrices derived from surveys on non-food primary shopping destinations, okay, non-food primary shopping destinations. By creating the probabilities for each SOA, I mapped Axiom's data, um, the real world catchments, if you like, and these are on, on the left-hand side. Um, and that was quite easy to compare uh, against our model output, which is on the right-hand side. Overall, the correlation was uh, just around uh, 90%, which, which is quite good. Uh, however, the inner city location, in the inner city location, the response rate was relatively low. And therefore, you've got this fragmented picture, as uh, the error tends to be higher in, in, in that central area. <clears throat> and we published um, the results of this study in uh, General of Retailing and Consumer Services. So if you want to have a look, please do so. Then we've got the Internet User Classification. It is a purpose-built classification of Internet use and engagement. And we use k-means clustering method. And we employed three major blocks of, of data. These were Oxford Internet Surveys. I've already mentioned those before, the so-called OXIS, Internet Enabling Infrastructures, and social demographic indicators from the 2011 census. And an example of such classification is shown in these maps for Liverpool and London. So you've got Liverpool and then you've got London. Um, there are 11 major groups that engage with ICT in completely different ways. So each of these groups, which is here, they, they engage in different ways with uh, information communication technology. Well, also, what it means that they, some of these groups will be engaging in online shopping more than other groups. In London, there is a quite uh, distinctive um, spatial pattern, but in Liverpool, it's, it's not that clear. And here I've got uh, one of these uh, rendered pictures of uh, internet user classification. It looks like satellite picture or something like London by night, but it's not. It's, it's internet user classification. It's just uh, different types of rendering. And then we've got uh, consumers' propensity for online shopping. So as you can see on this graph here on the right-hand side, nationally rates of online shopping equate to 53%. So this is uh, our zero, basically, in fact. And here we're showing the differences from the national mean. And so there are clear, clear differences between different IEUC groups. These are the same groups as I showed in the previous map. So, for example, the low density but high connectivity group, which is here, and the other two groups, called uh, uh, constrained by infrastructure, if fringe, are most likely to engage in online shopping. Uh, whereas uncommitted and casual users, marginals, all these three or four groups here, are less likely to uh, engage in online shopping. So, having that information for every, for for the whole country, we could uh, create catchment profiles based on that classification. And uh, having catchment profiles for every single town center, we could create an index of high exposure. And this map here on the left-hand side uh, 
provides evidence that predominantly the secondary and tertiary retail centers located around major metropolitan areas reveal the greatest exposure to the impacts of online sales. Uh, this trend has been reiterated in other parts of the country, uh, although to a smaller extent. So all the bigger metropolitan areas such as Manchester, Liverpool, Leeds will have similar trends, um, but to a slightly smaller extent. What's also very interesting is that none of the big centers, town centers, city centers was uh, classified as highly exposed. They were all basically like commuter belt in, in South East England. And then we've got uh, vulnerability to online shopping. Um, I used the evidence from literature and I calculated a composite measure of retail centers vulnerability based on supply factors. Essentially, these were uh, data on retail occupancy. occupancy. Uh, so um, I look at uh, the proportion of different retail types, uh, broader, more detailed categories, and, uh, and calculated uh, the indices. So what, what you need to know here that there were two types of impacts easily distinguished. So there was a positive impact for anchor stores and leisure units. As uh, if a center had relatively many anchor stores and you know quite rich leisure units, the center was much more likely to be resilient as people were much more likely to come to the center and, and stay a bit longer. Also le leisure units, you know, leisure offer it's very difficult to digitize. Okay. And um, there was a negative weight of the so-called digitalization retail. This were the types of retail services uh, that have high online penetration levels. So um, just to recap, uh, higher proportions of digitalization retail were associated with enhanced vulnerability, whereas higher proportions of anchor stores and leisure units indicated greater resilience to online sales. So by exploring and then intersecting the exposure and vulnerability indices, I, I could calculate the e-resilience scores for each retail center. And here I've got the two tables showing uh, 10 most and 10 least e-resilience town centers in, in the UK. The final scores were scaled into the range, excuse me, between 1 and 100 for the clarity reasons. So, so it can be seen quite clearly you know, what is the score and where that center is placed in, in, in that index between 100 and 1. And here we've got um, a flow diagram of uh, the way we calculated the <clears throat> resilience scores. So just to recap again, we had this, on the left-hand side, we had this OXIS surveys, census and internet infrastructure data. Um, and based on this data, we, we came up with these internet user classifications, the, the so-called IUC, by using k-means clustering method. And on the other hand, we had this local data company data, uh, town center boundaries data, and road network. So by using this data, I was able to calculate retail catchments for every town center in the country um, by using the bespoke half model. In stage two, uh, <clears throat> using those two intent users classification and retail catchments, I could calculate index of high exposure to online shopping, and directly from this data I could calculate uh, index of supply vulnerability. And by intersecting those two indices, I came up with this e-resilience measure, which I just showed you before. And the results of, of this uh, study were published in uh, GeoForum quite recently. So what is the value added of this study? Well, the study provides new insights into the debate on the impacts of online retailing on traditional brick and mortar retailers. It also tries to rebalance the current debate, uh, which has focused on supply factors. So I'm trying to show the importance of uh, demand factors as well, which uh, in other words are the uh, geodemographics. Uh, the study investigates <clears throat> how the 
resistance to impact of online sales can be measured and what role local demographics may have in that context. Okay? And uh, the study also offers valuable tools for various stakeholders. Basically, people who are um, engaged in revaluation of retail capacity models, or people who are engaged in uh, different uh, schemes of uh, town center, improving town center performance, will find uh, this tool pretty useful. And uh, all these models, all tools are <coughs> open source, so they're freely available online. And the last slide, it's um, about next steps. So, at the moment, I'm working on updating retail center, retail center boundaries. As the official DCLG, Department for Communities and Local Government Boundaries, which we used, were from 2004, which uh, is quite old, but that's the official boundaries we, we uh, have at the moment. Uh, so the extent has changed in many cases quite significantly. So, um, so for this reason, uh, we are updating these boundaries by also creating a new method which uh, will be more robust and uh, will be much easier to rerun the model and, and update um, town center boundaries, let's say, on an annual basis after each survey or something like that. Um, the second project I'm, I'm working on at the moment is uh, related to uh, e-resilience, is revaluation of retail catchments based on variable propensity for online shopping. So um, the current catchment model assumes uniform propensity for online shopping, which in other words uh, doesn't account for it at all. Okay? So the e-resilience project provides empirical evidence that uh, variable propensity can have an impact on catchment extent. So it would be useful to rerun the model using our e-resilience score. And uh, you've got two maps in here showing that's how catchment for Gloucester, how, how this uh, e-resilience can impact potentially uh, the catchment extent. And um, we also are working on evaluation of our model using consumer insight data. Uh, we have quite lots of data um, on uh, the CDRC website. So uh, one of these uh, data set is about click and collects from one of the major retailers and we will use that data to evaluate our, our models. And thank you very much. I'm going to thank you um, for presenting today. Um, and I'm going to thank all the attendees. I uh, hope you found it interesting. And uh, have a good afternoon. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye.